So you've been wanting to start your own business, huh? Well, starting a business takes a lot of thought. There's a lot of financial decisions that you have to make, a lot of marketing decisions that you have to make, and market research. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you everything that you need to know to start your own business. Hello, hello, I'm Sharon Lee of fearlesspursuits.com and you're watching Fearless and Power Tube, the place to be for entrepreneurs who like making money and working on their mind. All right, so let's just jump right into this video. Having your own business sounds like a wonderful thing. We have all of these ideas of what entrepreneurship is. We're thinking about the vacations. We're thinking about all this time that we can spend with our loved ones. And we're thinking about all this money that we can make. But I can tell you, it's that and a bag of chips. Specifically, what I mean is it comes with a lot of stress and frustration, a little bit of some burnout and some self-doubt. So I don't like to sugarcoat things. I want to tell you how it is. But to help you out, I want to start off with some common sense to see if you're really ready. That really is the first place to start. We realize that there never is a right time to start your business. Just like there's never a right time to have a baby starting a family. We're always thinking about how we want to have money in the bank. We want to make sure that we have a house or we have certain aspects of our life set up. But the fact of the matter is, it's never a good time to have a baby. It's never a good time to start a business. So the thing is, is that we get caught up in our mind and tell ourselves that we're not ready. We need another certification. We need more money. There's all kinds of things that we're telling ourselves. I don't have the support. I don't know what I'm doing. You have all kinds of self-doubt, but I can assure you that this video is going to help you if you want to start your own business. The reality is, is that starting your own business is actually the easy part. Keeping it going and making money, now that's a different story. Let's start off with what kind of business should you start? So you're tired of your nine to five. You can't imagine driving in your car one more day to listen to your boss yell at you and have all those negative vibes in the office. But what we need to do is we need to have your mind in the right place so that you can go down the right path and the right journey with the right direction. So the right kind of business really comes from your own interests, believe it or not. This is the very first place that we have to start. But the caveat here is to know whether or not your interests are a trend or a fad. This is the make it or break it part that will either help you to make lots of money or where you're gonna end up struggling. So this is really important for you to figure out. Also, when we're thinking about what kind of business to start, we're thinking about what kind of business model we wanna to have too. Do we want a brick and mortar business? Do we want to have a service type business? Do we want to have digital products? What about affiliate marketing? There's so many different models of businesses and you can even diversify and do a couple of them. That's what I do. I also do affiliate marketing, digital products, group coaching programs, one-on-one -on -one coaching programs, and it really helps me to be very diversified so that I can be more creative in my business. Once you've figured out what your passion is and you've determined that it's actually a trend instead of a fad, now the next thing that we have to do is market research. Market research is something that a lot of entrepreneurs or would-be entrepreneurs don't want to do. But I can tell you that's one of the biggest mistakes a lot of entrepreneurs make is by not doing the market research. The market research is finding out exactly what it is that your niche needs. Those are the people, the prospects, the potential clients out there that need you to solve their problem. So we have to find out what their pain is and we have to find out what it is they want. And somewhere in the middle is the Grand Canyon. That's all the steps to get them where they want to go. You have the prescription to get them where they need to go, but you have to find out all of the details. And I'll tell you why later in this video. When you're all gung-ho about wanting to start your own business, we feel very passionate and excited and there's no stopping us and we're putting in a lot of hours. But one of the things that I wanna caution you about here is setting realistic goals 
Your expectations about what you can and cannot do is really critical here. I've mentioned burned out before in a lot of other videos. This is something that's happened to me and every single client I have ever worked for. It's something that happens to a lot of people. So when you don't have realistic goals and expectations, it is a recipe for burnout. So you wanna make sure that you understand what it is that you can do your first year, second year, third year and beyond. We need to make sure that we have a business plan mapped out ahead of time so that we have our expectations set and we can move in that direction. You need to understand the difference between a successful business and a business that fails is really their expectations. Along with the expectations is commitment and perseverance. It's really important for you to really commit and, and absolutely agree that no matter what, you're gonna persevere. Having a business plan is really important. And I'll walk you through a little bit of what that looks like. All you need to do is have one piece of paper where you can literally write everything out and this way you'll be able to stick to it. So this is basically one piece of paper that will explain your entire business plan. You wanna make sure that you have the problem that your business solves. We need to make sure that we have an elevator pitch. This is kind of like a mission statement too. This is what does your business actually do? And then we need to make out a list of what your ideal clients actually need, right? We actually need to make out a list of who your ideal audience is. Is it women who are pregnant between the ages of 30 and 40 with triplets? You see, this is really important for us to know because what this does is it helps us to create content. We also need to have a marketing plan. So part of your business plan is your marketing plan. It's probably one of the most important aspects. It's a list of ideas of how you're actually going to get in front of your ideal audience. And then we need to really get honest about the financial plan. We have to have a list of all of your business's costs. What is it actually going to cost you to run your business? And how are you planning on make your money so that you can really pay back some of the debt that you might actually incur when you're starting your business. And finally, on your business plan page, you wanna have some sort of financial projections for each year. It's even better if you can drill down your financial projections to each quarter. An aspect of what a lot of entrepreneurs make the mistake of doing is not getting feedback. It's important for you to really ask other professionals what they think of your business model. One of the best ways to do this is through the SBA. They have a free service for you to actually go there and meet with other people. It's completely free and it's a great idea. This is something a lot of people don't take advantage of. Use the free resources that are out there and you'll be able to start your business on the right foot. Something else that you might wanna consider is figuring out a way for you to make money while your business is growing. It's always difficult to grow a business while you're doing your nine to five, but you wanna make sure that you have some kind of way to make money while you're getting going. Sometimes what people prefer to do is partner up with another expert. This is a great way to get started so that you can build your brand and let the entire world know what your skill set is. It's a great way for you to make a name for yourself, both of you individually and together. It's something that could it's something that could work out in the long run, but it's definitely something that's very valuable for you to do while you're getting your business going. Now here comes the fun part. Name your business. Your business should be named something that people will really resonate with, something that makes sense for them. You're really hoping that your business name can be something that's memorable, something that people will really associate with your brand, something that's easy to spell because ultimately you're going to have your own website. Taking it a bit further, you can register your name with your city, with your state, Taking it a bit further, you can register your name with your city or your state. You can decide if you wanna do an LLC or incorporation or a sole proprietorship. It's really a smart way for you to get your business started. 
Now let's think about your first product or service. This is really an exciting time for you. But now you'll be able to know because you've done that market research and you know exactly what your prospects and your ideal clients need from you. You can decide if it's going to be a digital product, if it's going to be a physical product, or like a signature program that you can deliver one-on-one -on -one or one-to-many. Now that you have your product, you can start promoting it. And this is where it gets really exciting. Hopefully you've put this together in your marketing plan and your business plan so you know exactly what to do. Make sure that your marketing is something that you enjoy doing. I first started my business with blogging and Pinterest, but I was told that social media was the way to go. So I stopped doing that. I even gave up on my YouTube channel and I went full on into social media. But because of my personality type, it didn't really work well for me. Not to say that Facebook and Instagram didn't work because I actually did get clients that way. The fact of the matter is, is I didn't enjoy it. I still don't enjoy it today. And there's lots of ways for you to promote your business without being on social media. I've created videos about this before and I will link them here below. One thing you want to do for sure is to create an email list. There are some advanced concepts for you to really be able to get out there and build your email list. I suggest that you think about getting on other people's blogs and other people's podcasts. Make sure that you have something to give away for free so people will associate you with giving value. And this is the way that you'll be able to keep them on your list and nurture them so that you can sell to them in the future. Now you know how to start your own business. You've got all the nuts and bolts and everything that you need to get going. This is a super exciting adventure for you and I'm really happy for you that you're on this journey. There are tons of useful videos here on this channel to help you with your marketing and your sales and of course with your mindset because entrepreneurs really struggle with a lot of ups and downs. I'll be really honest with you, entrepreneurship is a roller coaster. So be sure to come back to the channel to get your dose of entrepreneurial mindset. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the bell so that you can get notified of fresh videos when I upload them. This is Sharon Lee. I'll see you in the next video.